Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Spirits and Ghost Stories. We're your host. I'm your host, Thomas Ahrens. And I'm Carly Bird. We did it week 23. We are now at week 23. We are uh, shooting this on January 12th, I believe, based on my watch. Yes. Um, we are a week away from six months six months doing this show i can't believe we're so close to six months yeah like that's an achievement because we were talking like before the show like how like you know we're doing this and it's a hobby and like you know we're not making any money at it and it, it does suck to an extent and then you're like oh we just hit six months and when that that dawns on me it's like wow it kind of lights a fire and it lights a fire to keep going keep because going. it's it's like um it's like a pattern of behavior thing. Like you've done this so many weeks in a row. Yeah. Like it feels weird when we skip a week. Yeah. Like I remember, um, I think it was Thanksgiving was the first week we just stopped. We didn't do it. Like we, we basically did it consistently from uh, late August all the way to Thanksgiving week. Right. And then we were like, listen, well, it's a Thursday. We launched our episodes on Thursday and we decided to. You know, it's a holiday, you know? Yeah. Nobody's going to listen to it anyway because they're, you know, going to be spending time with their family and loved ones. Exactly. Right? So. But it just felt awkward that week. And I was talking to my friend um and he was like wait so you basically consistently like for like three months like always put an episode out and it's like yeah yes. and it's like it dawns me like oh crap yeah we basically did that that's pretty insane and the fact is like we only had one little hiccup week where you know we try to do like a live thing to celebrate the end of the year hitting right. two thousand downloads busted. and that and that and that got messed up which yeah. kind of got got us off of our, our rhythm but on the same token we yeah. did try that week Right. We just had the technical malfeasance. Um, now, next week, guys, we're going to be back to our there our old variation. We won't be doing a live stream. We'll have the three camera angles and stuff um, just to let you know. So if you don't like this version, don't worry. Next week, we're going to go back to the other version. Um, but yeah, so week 23. I guess we're also switching our roles up a little bit this week, as in I will be saying, what are we drinking? So you have something to tell me. I have something to ask you. Yes. Tommy, stop talking so I can ask you, okay. what are you drinking tonight? We <laughs> are drinking Palomio. Oh, my gosh. Palomio? Paloma? Paloma. We are drinking Paloma. With this fantastic zesty cist citrus drink, we do one tablespoon of sugar, one tablespoon of lime juice, a half cup grapefruit juice, mm -hmm. two ounces of tequila, and one fourth cup of club soda it is quite uh well i think tangy i was going for something fruity this evening mm. i was just like you yeah. know what i'm tired of the, the regular old like thicker drinks i yeah. kind of wanted to go with something like light and citrusy just, yeah yeah and for you guys that are actually going to be watching this live stream you might be thinking uh it's noon to that, I say it's five o'clock. It's five o'clock in Key West. It's five o'clock in Key West. There you go. Hey, to all of our Key West people that are watching, God, I hope you're watching. We miss you. <laughs> I do miss Key West. Oh my goodness, that's such a great drink. Though. I follow that Key West page on Facebook just to like look at, you know, warmth. <laughs> <laughs> it just makes uh, me so happy inside to see other people yeah. enjoying the outdoors without being dressed in 14 layers and mm -hmm. hating their lives. We're located in uh, Northern Virginia, so it's quite chilly. And I don't know if you know this, it, we're supposed to get like, I think they said 24 inches of snow on Sunday. No, yep. no, 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 no. Did you not know that? I did not. I saw that it was supposed to be down to 12 degrees on Sunday, but I did not hear that we were supposed to get 12 inches of snow. Well, that's in Hagerstown, I'm which is cry. another of us. Like it's it's supposed to like a hundred percent chance it's gonna rain or it's gonna snow, which is kind of like rain. It's just hard rain. Mm. So yeah, that's not gonna be fun. But you know, put a like and comment down below if you live in a warmth area because we're jealous of you. Did you say warmth area? Yeah, warmth area. If you live in a warm area, yes, which is warmth. Okay. Just saying. <laughs> So, I don't like the looks of that. No, I don't like it either. Um, to I keep begging our... to Thomas for him to just let us move somewhere south. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll get there eventually someday. Yeah. But anyway, so Carly, what is the, what's the story that we have for today? The story for today um, was written by a Canadian resident. Ooh. Yes. And um, it is called The Haunted Apartment. I like that. Okay. Yeah. Getting into some more haunting stuff exactly. after our fun little trail jaunt. Right. Right. We kind of went on like a 
I mean, all kinds of stuff. Because we had the week before was the, uh, what was the Ghost Hunters or whatever, mm-hmm. like on our live stream. And then the weekend or the week after, we had Carol Ann's story, which was the trail ride. Mm-hmm. So that was all outdoor haunted uh, happenings. But this one all happened in um, in Canada in an apartment. Mm-hmm. So are you ready? I'm ready. This sounds good. All right. Prepare yourself for the tale of the haunted apartment. Oh, boy. Ever since I was a child, I've always drawn in spirits or others. I usually didn't... Pl- pay my gifts any attention when I was younger, but nowadays I'm trying to get back into tune of things. I have many scary tales to tell, but this one will be about an apartment I lived in for a few years when I was around the age of nine. Background information that's needed. The apartments I lived in were brand new, as in my family was the first to live in them as they were just finished being built by my province's province's government. In Canada, the government used schools known as residential day schools to forcefully assimilate the indigenous population. The majority of these schools... Ha! So, hey, to all of Americans, we're not the only ones that have done some dark things. (laughs) The majority of these schools murdered and abused many of the children who would have to attend as young as three years old until they were 18. How would you abuse a three-year-old? Right. Why? I mean, it's more like a why, <laughs> not, not not how. Like, I think you know. I think some of our members could think of some creative ways. Well, yeah, don't actually. No, I'm sorry. Don't I take that do back. That. Don't, don't think of that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The old. <laughs> so this is the first All time right. people actually start emailing us. Like, <laughs> top three ways to abuse a three-year-old. It's like, oh, this this is our audience. Okay. <laughs> now we found you. Okay. <laughs> Uh, the old residential school sat in the next field over and was turned into an office building. It had still had all the original fixtures and bathroom stalls before it was in- inevitably torn down. My aunt worked in that building and I visited her there often. In the bathroom stalls was carved, Mary Gots a Baby. This will be key later on. The new apartment buildings were unfortunately built on top of unmarked graves of the children who attended the local residential school, which was one of the worst in Canada for abuse. When it began, I'm sorry, like how do you, how do you get away with that for so long? And I know there's probably some good documentaries. This is anecdotally because Carly, my, my my lovely wife, actually used to work in the school system, and I'm like. Like some weird stuff can sometimes happen in school, but how do you get away for that long abusing kids without nobody like, hey, wait a minute, this is like something weird's going on. Like, it doesn't seem possible or feasible that you can get away that long with abusing kids, like especially if it's like from three to eighteen. So it's like, are all the parents that neglectful? Does no one like like check in on these places? They're residential schools, so they, they live escape. there. But don't they get to leave? <laughs> Like, ever for, like, vacations or stuff? Yeah, they get to leave for, like, vacations and stuff. But if it's literally... I mean, it just goes along with, like, the cult mentality. Like, if if you if you and your friends are all being taught the same thing, mm-hmm. that the same thing is okay, and then you just, like, okay, well, it doesn't set well with me, but that doesn't mean that I can do anything about it. Mm-hmm. And it's really just kind of, like, that mentality of oppression and just like being told to do whatever and then you're being abused but nobody gets to hear about it because you don't talk about things that Mm -hmm. make you uncomfortable you know what i mean so anyway oh look we got it we got we got one one person watching that's pretty cool i'll snap i'll snap (laughs) anyway um (laughs) where was i you always do this to me no i always do it to you all right when it begun the first day in our new home was awesome It was just my mother, my sister, and me. Our local government built our apartments for single-parent housing. It was everything we wanted, especially for my sister and I, as now we didn't have to share a bedroom. Mm -hmm. As all three of us settled in my mom's bed to sleep, we laid there talking about how happy we were. At this point in time, we only lived in in a two-bedroom basement suites and never thought we'd be on the top Mm. floor with our own rooms we slept in our mom's bed the first night at around 12 a.m we were all still awake and we heard children giggling and the sound of marbles rolling on the floor with little feet running above our heads 
I looked at my mother and I said, who is that? To which she replied tiredly, it must be the upstairs neighbors. I didn't think twice until my sister turned and said, but mommy, we're the upstairs neighbors. Oh, damn. We didn't get much sleep that night. A few months go by. I love how the kid would say something like that because the kids are innocent and the parents <laughs> got to pucker up like, shut the, like, I don't know, like there's got to be something. Oh, well, since you're a number one super fan, um, it is a tough time, but we're just getting this broadcast out there. So we have an episode for next week. For tomorrow. For, yeah, for tomorrow. <laughs> I, I am debating on whether we should do a live stream next week just to celebrate six months and then the next week go back to our old format. Yeah. And then maybe just like do it maybe on a Saturday Saturday evening, just do a live stream just to celebrate. Because six months is a big deal. I know we're getting away from the story, but come on, six months? That's damn. Six months is a big deal. Twenty four episodes? Yeah. I think that we're also gonna start um I don't know if you wanna keep this one in the podcast, but we're gonna start like um bulk recording yeah. our episodes. We need to. So that we don't have to um scrounge around every single week and be like, ah, it's time for our episode. Yeah. yeah. And especially before I start classes again. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway. Uh okay. Back to our horrifying story. A few months go by with more and more activities. Our family had gotten so aggressive with each other, and with my sister reaching teenagehood, she became ruthless and cruel. She'd scream and slam doors, chase me around the apartment this till I had sister? to lock myself in. Yeah. Her normal sister. Mm -hmm. Okay. I once spent four hours locked in the laundry room because she wouldn't stop. I spent a lot of time mulling it over in my room, which was just so happened to be the most active part of the house. Mm. We think it's because I was so sad and defeated, whatever it was liked to feed on that, let alone my sister's anger. My room was different. Its door had a corridor, so you couldn't see out or in unless you walked through it. To combat that, I had an old, fat, back television from the 90s. It sat on an angle those. in the opposite corner of the door, which meant I could see past the corridor, mm -hmm. down our hallway, through the reflection. Next to that was an antique desk that we got a few years before we moved in at a local antique shop. I remember that. It was like way remember back those in the TVs? day. They were, yeah. They were, like, you get a big screen, but it like took up half a, the basement. Uh, yeah. And it weighs a thousand pounds. Yeah. Like, if you pushed it on somebody, they would die. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, the oh shit was from the kids' comment. Yeah. Yeah. Linda, uh, mom. <laughs> Linda, mom. Yeah. It's crazy. Like the fact, like, I don't know how you get those kind of places, even if they're residential, and you get away with child like abuse for so long. Uh -huh. Like you just think somebody, like a government official, would come in and it's like, oh, this kid's bawling his eyes out. Hmm. Do we just believe the person, or is there probably another issue there? But anyway, I digress. I could get in a whole rant about that. But so I think back then, though, that wasn't like on the forefront of people's mind. Is there abuse going on in here? You know, just like well, coming I, in and how unannounced. Could it, how could it not be? Like I, maybe you're right. Maybe it's the culture. Because like nowadays, in nowadays school, it's like everyone's so hyper aware. Over the top. Yeah. yeah. And then back. Well, that's because of what went on back then. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that was brought along because it was ignored. For so long. For so yeah. long. No, so. I, I agree. I agree with you. Yeah. Um, at bedtime, I'd fall asleep watching Little Bear or Winnie the Pooh. My mother would come in and turn the TV off when she knew I was sleeping. She'd also turn my bedside lamp off, which proved to be a problem. Have you seen Little Bear? I know you saw Winnie the Pooh. I saw Winnie the Pooh. I was a big... I... Was, I, I, I Winnie the Pooh fucks. He's awesome. I think he's pretty awesome. I think Little Bear. Little Bear know. was like my day and age. I don't know. Oh, uh, Linda just commented back then. Ba uh, Carl, you want to read that? Yeah, it says back then people mind their own business, or at least that's what they thought they were doing. Yeah, I guess like back then, like if you had these hospitals, like people would be like, ah, I'm showing my business because it's so crazy. Because you think about like, a pendulum and like back then. Like no one really like, didn't look into it or whatever. Yeah. But nowadays, then we're on the other end of the spectrum where people are like, over the top, hyper aware of what their kids are doing at all times. I feel like, and it's like, is there a happy medium? Is there a middle ground between like letting your kids break and enter and not worrying about what they're doing, like just running rough shot, and then calling any kid that's unsupervised like a feral child or free range, you know, raising a kid? Like, I feel like it went from helicopter parents now, when back then it was like, wow, we don't care, let right. them run amok. Like, right. There's a happy medium. There's a happy medium. But yeah, no, like TVs back then were big and Little Bear. I don't remember Little Bear, but Winnie the Pooh is still better than Little Bear. So 
Continue. Oh, made a full circle that conversation. Yep. Every night at 3 a.m., my television would turn on by itself, and every night the ringing sound of it booting up would wake me. When this would happen, my closet door, which I kept closed and it jammed shut with a hockey stick, would be slid open and the hockey stick would be on the floor or even leaning against the wall when I looked up. Inside the closet, you could make out a big shadow. If it were to stand, I guess it'd be almost seven feet tall, but it was always hunched over, crouched in the corner of my closet. I'd rush to flick my lamp on, and it'd be gone. I rarely got any sleep at night, and although the shadow seemed malicious and acted as a poltergeist, mm. it felt comforting, as if it was always there when my family life was going down the drain. Mm -hmm. When I did sleep, I'd have loving dreams of a man caring for me and holding me when I felt sad, and I could physically Aww. feel the hugs. One time, my mother was off to work and kissed my forehead goodbye, she left, and it was just me at the house when I was half asleep. Eyes closed, I felt a pair of arms hug me tight, so tight I couldn't move. I believed my mother came back to hold me again, so I opened my eyes to say goodbye once more. Then I realized no one was there, and it was still holding me. Oh Broad daylight. Eyes open. No. It finally let go, and I sat up and rushed to the living room and went on with my day. Mm-mm. Some days, I would fall asleep early when I was too tuckered after school. One of those days, I was woken by my TV like clockwork at 3 a.m. I got up to turn it off, so I used, so, so used to the trickery, I wasn't scared, just exhausted. When I saw a girl with a white nightgown standing in my doorway in the reflection of the television. I assumed it was my sister at the time and got mad at her for just standing there, and to, crawl, and to crawl into my bed if she wanted to sleep with me. So, to which I got no response. I stormed into my corridor to see no one standing there, just in time to witness her long black hair running into the bathroom diagonally opposite of my room in the hallway. I rushed to the bathroom and flicked on the light to find myself alone. My mother called out to me and demanded that I stayed in her room when she said that my sister was gone on a sleepover after I had gone to bed. Mm. Not long after all of this activity, my mother refused to let me sleep in my room. I still spent most of my time in there, writing or drawing at the desk next to my window. Most of my friends lived in the same buildings. Just as much activity as me and I had become so depressed I used to watch them playing from my window. A couple of times they told me they witnessed a man standing behind me as I would stare at them. I spent hours at the desk and wrote many stories. One day I was underneath it grabbing a stack of paper when I looked up to see a carving that read, Mary Gotza Baby. When I came what? to the realization that this specific desk is from when the residential school was in operation. Not long after this discovery, and later confirmation by my aunt, did we move out, but then as we were loading up the moving truck, a neighbor saw the desk and decided to take it for themselves. We still to this day don't know who took it, but I have prayers for them that they don't suffer the way I did and still currently do. Whatever resided in my closet still to this day is attached to me. Well over a decade and two provinces later, it's still there. Now that I'm trying to be more in tune, maybe I'll figure it out once and for all. And that was the tale of the haunted apartment. Does haunted have a negative connotation to it? Because yes. we've we've done we've done this. Oh, I think we said it once. We've done this six months almost. Mm -hmm. It's weird because we always think haunted bad, but we've had a couple of stories now where it's like the ghosts are good. Yeah, like they're not malevolent. I guess not evil. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking like the the Christmas story with the Ouija board, but the grandmother wasn't trying to spook him on purpose. She, right. Like he said, "I still love you." Um, the the house in the woods where the girls like were tortured souls, like trying to get help. Like yeah. we've had these stories where it's like there's a spirit there present, but it's not always evil. 
oh, the Civil War story. Those those soldiers, they weren't haunting the family right. necessarily. They're like trapped and wanted to go home. Yep, that was a good one too. And, and this one here is the same way. It's like this one didn't seem like it was trying to scare her no. or like hurt her. Right. It was like trying to comfort her. Yes. Because she was so depressed and everything, but it latched itself onto her. It did. Yeah. yeah. So that makes you wonder, um, could it potentially turn into something bad? Or is it just there to be a comfort? And I also noticed that it's a male figure, mm -hmm. but she didn't have a father. Oh, yeah, that's a good so catch. So almost it's that's like really good catch. filling in that void that she has mm -hmm. to to comfort her and be that father figure for well her. Well done. Yeah, I didn't, that didn't even click to me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Like that is real. Yeah. Like she maybe she imprinted this like and like, oh, this is like it, it is. It's her it's her protector almost yeah. because she doesn't even seem too alarmed by it, like a little alarmed, but not like right. full on like, oh, crap, like, you know, my life's in danger. Right. But it could also be maybe sleep paralysis, something mm -hmm. like that. Right. Um, I remember like two nights ago, I felt like I had a shooting pain here and I couldn't move. And then I felt like I woke up. Mm -hmm. Like it was so weird. Like I was dreaming within a dream and I woke up from yeah. the dream. You never say like, that's, that doesn't happen often. Yeah. But when it does, it's like, it's a little alarming because you don't know like, wait, is, is this, this, have I woken up yet? Yeah. Is this, it's like inception. Yeah. Um, but no, that's a really, really good story. Um, and so guys, yeah, I think that concludes, you know, this is short and sweet to the point, which I think you guys really do enjoy. Mm -hmm. Um, this has been week 23 of spirits and ghost stories. Again, fantastic drink recipe will be in the episode description and more news to come about uh next week to celebrate six months we're uh i was gonna go back to normal but the idea of maybe doing like a fun live stream that we prepped for this time would be kind of fun to celebrate yeah because uh, i like chatting with you guys oh and we got one more comment from our super fan i feel the other way around that he was a bad spirit or depressed bird himself which is what caused her depression or like, okay, so basically he caused her depression and he was oh. the bad spirit. Possibly. Actually, possibly. I, like, I like that interpretation. Again, this is also why I like live is to get other people's yeah. like views on some of these things. Because yeah, like I could see like that. Was it caused? It seemed like her he was looming over her, especially whenever she was staring out the window. Yeah. Looking at, you know, her friends playing and whatnot. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. So overprotective mother, maybe. No dad around. Coupled all that together with depression. And then possibly the spirit that is either feeding off of this this negativity mm -hmm. um, or it's something that's trying to comfort her. So it's like, it could be one of the two. I think the biggest thing that we'd have to see is the inner, the inner fist sister. Got more aggressive. The inner fist? It's so far away, I can't read it. Inner in her, in her, not in her. We're missing, uh, uh, we're missing Carol Ann, our interpreter, to help with- uh, more aggressive. Oh, her sister got more aggressive when the spirit left. When she no, got no, her spirit. sister. At the longer they stayed in the house, the more aggressive her sister got. Remember, the whole family got aggressive towards one another, and the main character just got like depressed and everything because it felt like her family was falling apart. So the thing we'd have to do is reach out to this person and, and find out like has things gotten better? Yeah. To really like no to put a to put a pin in this like to know right. Oh, this is like Amityville horror. Yeah. Like the longer Very they stayed in that house, yes. and that was the same thing in like the movies that you watch. The longer they're in the house, it like ate at them. Right. This could, yeah, this could go with what Linda's saying. Like maybe that could, I could see that as a possibility too. Like the longer it was here, the spirit was growing in strength. Right. Um, but maybe because of like, I don't know, we started this off talking about Winnie the Pooh. I'd like to think that maybe it was comforting. But the only way you'd know is like once this thing left, she said like she still feels it, but has she gotten better? That right. would be the thing. If right. she's gotten better, then she's you could still say, like, depressed and whatnot, then that's yeah. kind of your telltale sign. Okay. He's not good. He's not a good spirit. No, he's not a good spirit. Yeah. But if she's like moving on and actually can go about her, her day and her business, mm -hmm. then maybe he's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then the last thing, I guess, our, our new segment that we're doing is creepy stuff in the news. Remember that from last week? Yes. Okay. What do you have for me? So creepy stuff in the news that I have, and this will be actually posted on the YouTube version because I don't have the computer in front of me right now to get it up. I think this was creepy in the news where a guy, let me get it up here. Uh, a kid went into their pool in Florida this past week. And when the mother, the kids went outside to go swimming mm -hmm. and these were like young toddlers, whatever, like, like almost big old, old enough to actually swim. 
Well, she, they jump in the pool and they swim around. To her alarm, she walks outside in Florida and there was a six foot alligator in the pool when the kids jumped in. Now they have a bigger pool and the, and the gator was on the other side of the pool. Still. But they ran and jumped in there thinking they didn't even think it was a real alligator. Oh my gosh. But it was at the bottom of the pool, just laying at the bottom. They thought what? it was dead or whatever. And then she came out there absolutely screaming. Um, and then animal control was called. They got the gator out. But apparently, alligators can climb fences. And oh, yeah. I will I've put seen them do that all before. this will be posted on the YouTube uh, video that I'll do. I'll edit that together. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was freaky. So it was a weird, like, I thought it was kind of scary because like the idea of like, you tell your kids to go back and swim and they're like, I think they're like, like nine to 10. So like kind of just about old enough to hop in the pool yeah. and you don't think about it. Yeah. But the fact that you don't think about it and you hop in there and you look and there's like this massive thing at the bottom of the pool and you're like, holy shit, get the F out, get the F out. I think that's a little creepy. Yeah. But then I Googled this other article and it was an alligator on a chain link fence. It was a four foot alligator climbing. Oh yeah. I've a chain seen that video before. They can just like, when did they learn that? Scale right up there. When did they learn how to climb? Holy shit. There's claws. They've been training. Claws? But the fact that they can scale fences now. And that's another scary thing that I have. Like if we ever like take like Jojo to Florida, you can't like just let, let him go down to the water either. You gotta be very careful oh, about yeah, that. Yeah, of All right. And then our last comment from our super fan. Another great ghost, another great ghost story. The spirit feeds off the negative energy and her not inner. No, so, Thomas. Hmm? Oh my gosh. Let me read it. Okay. In other ghost stories, the spirit feeds off negative energy. So she's saying that she's supporting her theory that the ghost is evil. Gotcha. 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 Well, thank you so much. Cause that, that did add to the story. It makes me actually think of like different uh, version. Um, so that was, uh, creepy creepy stuff in the news we're mm -hmm. gonna work on the title it's a working title actually yeah. uh last thing for the day please comment below or email the show and let us know like a good idea for the segment because yeah. i think creepy stuff in the news is probably a little too no, long it's too long you can make it but i like the idea of doing this because if you go online you can find some creepy stuff that's horrific happening. news no that's like all news all news is horrific <laughs> and then um. as i say uh as i always say uh you know welcome back spirits and ghost stories I think we need to uh, end with you saying something like, uh, "Was it smooshy smoosh?" I think that should. Smooch. I think that should be your kick line because I've heard so much great feedback from that last episode. Because she had COVID, she I was sick. Know. I literally don't even remember saying yeah. that. And you, and I don't. And I think she drank moonshine, and she said smooshy smoosh. I, I yeah, it was something <laughs> about. Oh, your story it was like two lovers or whatever, yeah. you know, like getting on the woods or something. And I was like, smooshy smooch. But I did not remember that until you're like, called me downstairs. You're like, come watch this. What is happening? <laughs> and I was like, I blacked out. I don't know what happened. I think I might put that at the beginning of our videos for a while. Yeah. <laughs> your, your face and the fact that I just my face blew over dead. it and I just did. kept going on with the story. Like I'm talking to somebody that's just not there mentally. You didn't even it's say like, anything about you're it. You're correct. It's like, like, what do you think of this? Smoochy smooch. You're correct about the Ukrainian crisis. <laughs> I believe in that too. Anyway, moving on. So- <laughs> With that bombshell, it is time to end. With this that has been week shell? 23. 23. 23. It's been week 23. All right. Thanks Send for tuning in. Thanks for watching Spirits and Ghost Stories. Bye. Bye.